Hi, super scientists. We're going to be looking at 4.2 currents and climate. So we'll be learning how to describe different types of climates and ocean currents and how they can affect climate. So ocean currents are going to include a couple of different things, surface currents and deep currents, which we'll be looking at. But one that you may be familiar with is the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is the largest and most powerful current. So one thing that you may notice particularly during the summertime when we have hurricane season, is that a lot of the hurricanes tend to kind of loop up into the Gulf of Mexico, which is right here, or up the east coast of the United States following this path. So the reason why a lot of hurricanes do that, as you notice based on the scale here where you have the temperature that's measured, this red and dark area is going to be where the Gulf Stream is located. So the Gulf Stream, again, largest, most powerful current, it carries warm water. So that warm water from towards the equator, so around the mid part of the globe, so it carries that warm water and goes up to Gulf of Mexico and continues following the path up the east coast of the United States, which is what you see reflected right here. So that's why we have a lot of hurricanes uh, following that pathway. So one of the types of currents is surface currents, and surface, as you would imagine, is at the surface of the ocean. So surface current is going to affect weather. So the uh, surface current is going to either warm or cool the air above it. Surface currents are driven by wind, so by the uh, differential in temperatures. So as you know that um, warm air rises, heat rises. And so that heat is going to then impact the air that's above it. So, for example, at the equator, you've got a lot of warm water. So that moisture is going to um, basically impact the air that's directly above it. So if you have warm water, then you're going to have warm air right above it. It's kind of like if you've ever been boiling, you know, water for spaghetti or something. If you have the pot of water that's like down here on the stove, then way up here above it, I'm not talking about way down here right at the the pot of water, but way up here above it, you can still feel that warmth. You can feel that moisture because it's rising and evaporating. Um, the currents are going to also affect climate because it more moves that water around the globe. So if you look at uh, these arrows, they're representing different currents. The red is, of course, warm, and the blue color is going to represent cooler currents. So as you can see, the ocean is all connected. Even though we say there are separate oceans, it's all connected. So the currents help to move that water. So for example, uh, cooler water from down south towards Antarctica is going to move um, basically around the lay of the land of South America here. So it pushes it up, and then once it gets up here, it's going to be impacted by direct sunlight from the sun since that's at the equator. So then that water will then warm up and is going to be moved. And as it continues moving downward or across, so in this example, as it's moving downward, it's going to get cooler again because it's coming in contact with that um, colder air. So another type of currents is going to be deep currents. So you have surface currents and these are deep currents. So deep currents are going to be caused by um, differences in density. So we just were saying that heat rises. So the warmer water, warmer air, uh, warm water is going to be up closer to the surface. And then the cooler water is going to be further down below. So you can see how the deep currents basically form like convection currents essentially in moving water around so that uh, warmer air gets, or the warm water, excuse me, gets heated up near the equator, rises upward, is now going to be at the surface, and then as it's moving, uh, following the lay of the land, will eventually cool down at the North Pole in this example. So upwelling is another term that you need to make sure that you are familiar with and understand. Up referring to upward, upwelling is cold water that moves upward. And as the cold water moves upward, it's going to bring with it a lot of nutrients. So basically it's bringing minerals that fish can eat. So um, you are going to have colder water because since the cold water is more dense, you're going to have cold water that moves upward. And the reason why that cold water is able to move upward is because of wind. So as the wind is blowing, it's going to be pushing some of that warmer water out of the way. And as the warm water is moved out of the way, the cold, up, the cold water can come upward and replace it. So that's what you see going on here. So the warm water is pushing that um, surface warm water out of the way and then the cold water from deep down the ocean is able to move up to replace that. So the key thing about upwelling though is that as it's bringing up the cold water it's going to bring up tiny organisms so maybe some zooplankton 
and nutrients that are basically fish food. So that will impact fish populations because all the fish are going to be like, where the where the food go? So the fish are going to swim upward as well in order to follow the food. So you end up having a lot of fisheries that um, will fish in areas where there's a lot of upwelling. And that's primarily going to be in the neuritic zone um, that we'll talk about later where you have um, a lot of this movement for upwelling that's continuing to happen pretty frequently. So the Coriolis effect is something you probably talked about last year. The Coriolis effect basically is just due to the Earth's rotation. So because the Earth spins as it does, that affects fluids like wind and water. So for example, in this picture here, starting out in the center and trying to get to this red dot. So because the Earth is turning, it doesn't end up at the red dot, it ends up in a different location. So that's one thing that people that travel a lot, uh, for example, people that are pilots or people that um, are captains of a ship and that kind of thing will have to take into account that transportation factor that the Earth is spinning. So in the uh, northern hemisphere, you see the Coriolis effect um, pathway taking place right here. So the path without the Coriolis effect would be following this green line. However, because the Earth is spinning and moving around, the um, pathway ends up being curved. So it ends up from the North Pole um, kind of curving downward and then from the South Pole curving um, upward as well. So it sort of meets at the equator basically. So in the northern hemisphere, you have wind and water curving to the right. and the southern hemisphere, wind and water will curve to the left. And the last thing is El Nino. So Nino is referring to baby. So El Nino is going to be a weather pattern. It's a weather pattern that is going to cause some, a lot of times, strange, sort of severe, um, more impactful weather. So El Nino happens when the Pacific Ocean gets warmer. And generally, the Atlantic Ocean, due to the Gulf Stream, is going to be the warmer ocean area. So if the Pacific Ocean gets warmer, then it's considered to be an El Nino season. And it can cause results such as flooding, drought, uh, warmer water in the Pacific, which will increase storms like severe cyclones, um, hurricanes, and that kind of thing. Because generally, you hear about hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean and not so much in the Pacific Ocean. And when you're not in an El Nino pattern, it's considered to be La Nina, which is just like the opposite of that, where things sort of uh, settle back out. And this, the reason why this term is uh, referenced in Spanish is because it was El Nino weather patterns were first noticed in um, South America, I believe. So there were some uh, fishermen who um, realized that at certain times they had a lot of fish and the other times there weren't a lot of fish when they uh, went out fishing. So they were kind of tracking the weather due to um, their livelihood and being able to provide um, food not only for their family but also to make money for their family to purchase things as well. So El Nino basically just causes stronger storms. So if you're going to have snow, then you may end up having a blizzard. You may have a lot more snow than you may have anticipated or normally have had. So you should have.